Hi, and welcome to a video lesson on double bar graphs. Here's what you'll learn, how to make double bar graphs. What is a double bar graph? Well, a double bar graph is just a bar graph that compares two related sets of data. Let's take a look at the graph on this page. It's a graph about votes for a potential club name. There are two bars over the sharks, two bars over the eagles, and two bars over the pandas. It's these two bars that make this a double bar graph. But what does each of the bars mean? Ah, there's the key. Down at the bottom, it tells us the dotted bars indicate the number of votes from 10-year-olds, and the lined bar indicates the number of votes from 11-year-olds for each club name. Now let's make our own double bar graph. The table shows the life expectancies of people living in three North American countries. We want to make a double bar graph of the data. Well, the first thing we should do is make sure we understand the data in the table that we have to graph. In the very first column are the three countries we're going to be considering for our graph. In the second column, the male ages and life expectancy. And the third column, the female life expectancy ages. The first column of data are normally plotted along the horizontal or the x-axis. The second and third columns of data are normally plotted along the vertical axis or the y-axis. It's these two columns that give us our double bars. First, let's label our graph by adding the country names along the bottom of the graph. Once we have those evenly spaced on the horizontal axis, don't forget to add a title, three North American countries. Now let's figure out our scale for the vertical axis. We always start at zero, so let's add that at the bottom. Next, we need to see how many vertical lines are available for plotting our data. Let's go ahead and count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we want to evenly space the data out among those nine lines. And to do that, we simply take the largest number we need to graph and divide it by nine. Looking in our table, we see the largest number is 83. So we divide that by nine, and we get 9.2. Now, we're not going to use intervals of 9.2 because that's kind of awkward. So we'll round up to 10 to ensure our largest number stays on the graph. So start at 10 and go by increments of 10 all the way to the top of the graph. In our case, our graph will end at 90. Now we need to add a label for those numbers. What do they represent? They represent life expectancies in years. With both our x and y axes labeled, we can now go ahead and create our bars. Let's graph the data for Canada first. Males live to an average age of 76. Locate that number on our graph, and we're going to draw a bar from 0 up to that point. But before we do that, remember to leave room over Canada for the bar for females that we're going to graph right beside it in just a moment. Let's go ahead and graph that bar. As you see, I made that bar blue. We're going to need a different color for the females, so we have two different bars, and we'll have a key at the end to tell everybody what each colored bar means. Now, let's graph the bar for Canadian females. Females in Canada live to an average age of 83. Locate 83 on the graph, and draw a bar from 0 to 83 right beside the bar for the Canadian males. Now, we'll create the bars for Greenland and Mexico in the same way. Now let's draw the bars for the life expectancy in Greenland. Males live to the average age of 66. Locate 66 on the graph and draw our bar up to 66. Females live to age 74 in Greenland, so locate 74 on the graph and draw our pink bar up to that point on the graph. Now let's draw the bars for life expectancy in Mexico. Males live to age 69. Locate 69 on the graph. Draw our blue bar up to 69. And females live to 75 in Mexico. So locate 75 on the graph and draw our pink bar up to 75. Very good. Nice looking graph. But to complete the bar graph, we need to do a couple more things. One, we need to add a title life expectancy in three North American countries. And we need to do one more thing. Do you remember what that is? We need to add a key. The reader of this graph needs to know what the colored bars represent. So we're going to put a key down at the bottom telling them that blue are the males and pink are the females. And we're done.
Congratulations, you just made a double bar graph and you learned how to make any kind of double bar graph.